join me in learning more about a historically mixed race group of Namibians, called the Rehoboth Busters. They are also known as the Rehobothers, and are found in central Namibia. The name Buster can be translated to Bastard in English. The Busters claim this name with pride, even though in many parts of the Western world it may be seen as derogatory. Interestingly enough, there is another group of Busters in South Africa, known as the Bossless Busters, and also a group called Blasters in Indonesia. Busters are mainly descended from Dutch males and Khoi females. However, genetic studies show minor ancestry from Southeast and South Asia. Busters also have minor ancestry from Southern African Bantu speakers. Busters are traditionally Calvinist Christians, and the town of Rehoboth boasts many beautiful Dutch style churches built by the Busters, ranging from the late 17th century. They were traditionally livestock and crop farmers, but these days they can be found in all professions, particularly in building, construction, carpentry, teaching and traditional dress and jewelry making. Buster dishes include rooster bread, which is bread baked on an open fire. They also enjoy poiki kos and game meat, such as ostrich and deer. Game meat is often dried in order to turn it into biltong. Busters also make their own traditional beer, called gimme beer or ginger beer. Desserts usually include jam tarts and pumpkin fritters. It is a remarkable feat achieved by the Busters to have built such an amazing town in a semi-arid region. The town is littered with modern and old Dutch-styled houses and even a radio and television station. The town has many stores, a town hall, containing many historical artifacts and images of deceased captaina or captains. When South Africa was still controlled by the Dutch, the Busters enjoyed privileges that were not extended to other people of color. This is because they shared cultural and religious ties to white Afrikaners. Hence, Busters often acted as supervisors over other servants and were often treated as family by their employers. Many were also directly descended from the men they worked for. Although, majority of the Busters were mixed race, many Khoi and Free Blacks became part of the community. In addition, other mixed race people, who were property owners and farmers in their own right, also became members. Some Busters did not identify with Cape Coloreds, as they believed they were descendants of European men and Malay, or Indonesian women. In the early part of the 18th century, many busters became successful farmers and owned their own farms in the Cape. As competition for land and racial discrimination became more prevalent, the government implemented oppressive laws, which adversely affected non-Europeans. As a result, some busters were absorbed into the broader colored servant class. Others maintained their independence by moving to the outskirts of the colony. From about 1750, the independent Buster farmers settled at the northwest of the Cape, at Kamisburg, as the racist laws expanded throughout the colony, and competition for resources and land increased, Buster families began to move to the middle of the valley of the Orange River. They eventually settled close to an area called Detain. Some Busters remained in this area and eventually became the Greekwa people. In 1868 Busters left the Cape Colony and settled in central Namibia, at Rehoboth. Here, they managed to build a strong community, complete with their own government and constitution, known as the Fada Lycoveta or Paternal Laws. They also had a military and an economy, based on farming and herding. Community members paid taxes and levies to attend church, register births, deaths, and to send their children. To school at age seven. The town elected seven elected officials. Several of these political institutions were adopted from the neighboring Khoi tribes, in particular the offices of chief, captain, and subchief, on the captain, and the annual tribal gathering. The regulation of public life depended largely on the introduction of written congregational constitutions for both Christians and non Christian citizens. The captain was granted the powers to appoint members of a council, and together they formed the executive government of Rehoboth. The paternal laws also 
provided for a people's council, Volksrat, which was elected every five years. It formed the legislature of the Rehoboth government. Busters established a community based on birth. These laws stated that any citizen is a child of a Rehoboth citizen, or a person otherwise accepted as a citizen by its rules. Families continued to join them from the Cape Colony, and the community reached about 800 by 1876. The area was also occupied by native, Damara people, but Busters did not include them in population reports and they were not considered to be citizens. Throughout the 1870s, the much larger, Nama, and Herero groups, frequently raided Rehoboth. In 1880, Jan Africana gathered 600 men against the Herero, and different Nama groups. He commanded about 1,000 soldiers, with the Herero fielding about the same number. Busters tried to make alliances, as they were outnumbered on both sides. The wars continued, until about 1884, and, while suffering losses, the community continued to thrive. Through the 1880s, the community at Rehoboth were joined by other Buster families from Grootfontein, and surrounding areas. In the process of the German annexation of Southwest Africa, Buster Captain Hermanus van Veek signed a treaty of protection and friendship with the German Empire on the 11th of October 1884. In 1893 the Germans established the territory of the Busters, known as the Rehoboth Jabit. In this area the paternal laws were recognized. A second treaty concerning national service of the Rehoboth Busters of 1895 established a small armed contingent among the Busters, which fought alongside German forces in a number of battles against other indigenous groups and even in the colonial wars. German census reporting on Busters noted their high mobility. The numbers they recorded for the people changed as the Germans changed their racial classifications. They began to classify people based on appearance, instead of citizenship. A comparison of records suggests that in 1912, there were about 3,000 busters in the Rehoboth district. Most busters were concentrated in the Rehoboth Jabit, where they lived under their own law. The relationship soured between Rehoboth and Germany following the outbreak of World War I. The Germans ordered all healthy buster males into military service, which they resisted. Believing that the German troops had little chance against the superior South African and British Allied forces, busters tried to maintain neutrality towards both, but feared losing their limited autonomy. Cornelius van Veek, the Onderkaptein, Subchief of the Reho Bothers, arranged a secret meeting with South African General Louis Botha, on April 1st in Walvis Bay to assure him of the Busters' neutrality. The Busters feared that South Africa would see them as an enemy, as a result, they decided against deployment with the Germans. Although negotiations were in process, they learned the trains were due to leave the next day, and the night of April 18th numerous Busters defected from German service taking arms with them, that they intended to turn in at Rehoboth. In the meantime, Busters and Nama policemen worked to disarm German officers within the Rehoboth to beat, but wounded one fatally, and killed another outright. An armed contingent including Nama policemen killed several German citizens, including all of the Karl Boer family. With that, negotiations were over. As a result, Governor Theodore Seitz cancelled a protection treaty with the Busters, intending to attack Rehoboth. Van Veek informed General Botha, who advised him to get the Busters out of the area. Hence, they packed wagons and large herds of livestock and headed for the mountains. According to history, a 14-year-old Buster girl, who worked for the Germans in a camp, overheard a drunken conversation about their planned attack against the Busters. She took the word to the captain, and around 700 busters, including women and children retreated to Sam Cubas in the mountains, to prepare for an attack. Van Veek had hidden his family at Farm Garris, along with the families of Stoffel, and Willem Van Veek. Stoffel's wife, two children, a daughter and a son of Cornelius Van Veek, were all killed there. The others, including Van Veek's wife Sarah, were taken to Lutween Station and released on May 13th. On the 8th of May 1915, 
The Germans attacked in the Battle of Samkubis, where the stronghold was defended by 700 to 800 busters. Despite repeated attacks and the use of two cannons and three Maxim machine guns, the Germans were unable to destroy the busters' position. They ended the attack at sunset. At the end of the day, busters had all but run out of ammunition and expected defeat. That night they appealed to God, pledging to commemorate the day forever should they be spared. Their prayer is engraved on a memorial plaque they later installed at Samkubis. The Germans retreated the following day and the Rehoboth's buster community survived. This day is celebrated annually by busters as an integral part of their history and fortitude. As busters returned to Rehoboth, some killed Germans on their farms. The Germans posted some forces for protection, but as the South Africans approached, on May 23rd, they withdrew their forces. South Africa defeated the Germans, concluding the Peace of Korab, on July 9, 1915. They oversaw the administration of Southwest Africa, and established martial law. South African patrols were promised to keep the peace at Rehoboth. Busters tried and failed to have Rehoboth declared a British protectorate, like Bissett to land. Hence, all special rights they enjoyed under the Germans were evoked. Under South African rule, regular census were conducted, and the busters were a classified colored. Many busters continued to vie for the legitimacy of the Free Republic of Rehoboth. In 1952, Busters presented a petition to the United Nations to this effect, with no result. However, they managed to get some practical autonomy under South Africa. Under South African rule, Buster leaders started political parties to end Namibian occupation. They were amongst the first groups to appeal to the UN to end South African occupation of Namibia. In 1976, they settled for a semi-autonomous Buster homeland, known as Buster Jabit, based around Rehoboth, similar in status to the South African Bantu stands. After becoming semi-autonomous, the community elected Johannes Hans Degert as their captain. In the 1980s the Buster community had grown to 35,000, but was still the smallest community in the country. Busters still controlled about 1.4 million hectares of farmland in this territory. After Namibia gained independence, the SWAPO-controlled government did not recognize any special legal status for the Buster community. Captain Deergut claimed the government took land from Rehoboth and sold it to non-Busters. In the past, every male Berger or citizen had the right to apply for a free piece of land at the age of 18. On the 21st of March 1990, when the new socialist government took over the lands, they passed laws that prohibited busters from allocating land to their young men. In 1999 John McNabb became the sixth captain of the busters, after Captain Deegard passed away. McNabb protested against the government's management of former buster land, and says his farmers were forced to buy it back at high prices. Much of it has been sold to others since independence. In February 2007, the Captain's Council represented the Busters at the UNPO, an international pro-democracy organization founded in 1991. Since November 2012, the UNPO has called on the Namibian government to recognize Busters as a traditional authority in their historic territory, as it has for some other ethnic groups in the country. Today, young busters are carrying on the culture and history of their ancestors. Many young men and women are actively involved in community advancement, this can be seen through events like the Mr. and Mrs. Face of Rehoboth Beauty Pageant. The pageant encourages charity, but also teaches networking skills. Though men are still seen as the head of the house, women play a major role in the community. Many women today can be found in important positions in local government, business, education, and medicine, amongst other areas. It is evident that the Busters are a resilient group of people, with strength and persistence, to fight any challenge that threaten their community, ensuring their survival well into the future.